what's up guys this is will and welcome to the gaming lounge the dreamcast it was only around for a couple of years and yet it delivered more fantastic racing games and experiences than most consoles do in a lifetime today we're going to be counting down the top 15 dreamcast racing games now to qualify for this list i'll be very clear you have to be a racing game driving games doesn't count so crazy taxi we love you but you're not eligible unfortunately so, with that clarified and cleared up, let's get on with the list. So at number 15 we have Vanishing Point, which is a game that I didn't discover until uh, only five years ago or so. Uh, the controls take some getting used to, but I love the art style of this one and highly recommend that you check it out. Number 14, we have Tokyo Highway Challenge 2, or if you're in the US, Tokyo Extreme Racing 2. This is another one that uh, I actually only found out uh, a few years ago. You can still pick this one up fairly cheap in second hand. Highly recommend you give it a go. Again, it's a little different, it's a little twist, it's uh, sprint races, uh, but uh, so it's very, very much, you may like this one, you may not, but I highly recommend you check it out if you're into green cars racing. So, Number 13, we have Sega GT. Again, this one to me was a little disappointing. It was very much a, a Sega's version of Gran Turismo. It very much looks like an upscale PlayStation game, uh, which is a shame. It would be higher on the list. Uh, but again, it does it very well. I remember playing this one and thoroughly enjoying it. It doesn't hold up great today, um, but certainly worth a look if you want to check out what Sega was doing uh, to counter Gran Turismo back in the day. Number 12, we have V-Rally 2. This is a remake of the PlayStation version. Everything looks a lot sharper, everything looks a lot brighter, but it retains all of the PlayStation's original fun controls. And it's still great to play today, it looks good. Obviously, it will always be compared to Sega Rally 2. It's a completely different game. This is far more sim and related. Number 11 is actually a game that I only discovered very recently uh, on a Metal Jesus Rocks video. And that's one called Speed Devils. And it very much reminds me of, sort of Cruising Blast. I don't know if you played that last year on the Nintendo Switch. But it's, uh, it's fun, it's crazy. You know, you've got a Hollywood level where you have dinosaurs and King Kong jumping around. It's great to play. It looks good. It's by Ubisoft. Uh, and it's a bit of a hidden gem, actually. It was never on my radar. I highly recommend you give it a go, uh, and I'm putting it at number 11 in this list. So into the top 10, and one of two Mario style races here, Wacky Races. There was actually a uh, Genesis game that was unreleased uh, due to licensing issues. No such problem with the Dreamcast version, we got a full release of that. And it actually proved to be uh, a bit of a hidden hit. Um, very, very fun to play, really, really good racing action, and a great use of the license. If you're into Mario Kart-esque games and want to try something different, check this one out. Quickly 
It's the final lap. Go for it. Number nine is Yu Suzuki's Passion Project Ferrari F355. It's very limited, but what it does, it does extremely well. It just recreates the one car, hyper-realistic, just one view on the Dreamcast version. The PlayStation 2 version did actually have a view behind the car, but it really looks good. It really holds up today. I love the models, the Ferraris, and this one, if you're willing to work and willing to get better and better, you can make small impacts on the time. It's a great arcade racer. Uh, give this one a go to really take the important than the AMU version. Final lap. Hey, what's your name? Pretty hot sign. That's so full of a jello. That's right, eh? Well, I was wondering what the title of the song means. It's the Italian word for red. Bet you didn't know that. Scalato. Next up, we have San Francisco Rush 2049. This is a really good arcade conversion. The one thing that the Dreamcast did extremely well was convert a lot of our claims arcade games around the time. And San Francisco Rush is a very, very faithful port. It's still a whole ton of fun to play. I love the visuals, I love the geometry. It still holds up, it still is an awful lot of fun. If you're looking for something a bit more arcadey, which seems to have gone nowadays in the days of Forza and Gran Turismo, definitely check out San Francisco Rush. So number seven, we have our highest ranked Mario Kart-esque game, and that's and that's limiting space, space race. It's absolutely balmy, it's crazy, it's got really, really good power-ups, but fundamentally it's also a great racer. I love the visuals, love the cell shading. You can have up to four players. Works really, really well, a lot of fun. And, and I give this one the edge over wacky races, I think. So coming in at number seven, it's Looney Tunes Space Race. Number six, we have Sega Rally 2. This is obviously a port of the Model 3 version. And I remember judging this one when it came out fairly harshly because it wasn't a great port. It's a Windows C game. I don't think it really was as good as it could have been on the Dreamcast. But actually, revisiting it in 2022, it holds up surprisingly well. It's a lot of fun to play. I think it isn't realistic because that gameplay still comes up intact. It is classic Sega Rally, loads of cars, loads more courses compared to the original, and one of you know, I couldn't sort of any nowadays in order to meet. Number five, and I think people may be surprised that this one is so high, um, but this is Star Wars Racer. Now, this was critically lukewarm back in the day, mainly because it was very much a port of the N64 version, and it very much looked like a, a higher resolution N64 game. But that doesn't take away from the fact that it is a fantastic game. And the Dreamcast version, up until very recently when we had the re-releases, was always the best way to play this game. And it holds up today, super smooth, great fun racing. You can have an awful lot of fun with this one, and that's why it's at number five on this list. It's a new lap record. 
Number four, and I was surprised again replaying this one, I always prefer the original two, and especially with the Xbox Live and PSM release of Daytona in the USA a few years ago, I wasn't expecting to enjoy this one as much as I did. But actually, the, the visual style and what they went for in Daytona in the USA 2001 really, really holds up. Uh, I always found the controls a little twitchy. Once you get used to them, this is actually a really, really fun and great arcade racing game. It really, really does hold up today. That's why it's in the form of this. Number three, we have Hydro Thunder. Now, this is a game that wasn't on my radar at all. I remember when I purchased my Dreamcast with Sonic Adventure, you could get a game for £10. And the games were pretty, yeah, pretty naff, to be honest. But the one that had the best reviews, and I thought I'd have a look at, was Hydro Thunder. And boy, was I happy that I did that, because it's a fantastic arcade racer. Great faithful port of the arcade version on the Dreamcast, absolutely loved it, played it a, a ton back in the day, and happy to report that it's still a great racing game today. So number three, Hydro Thunder. Number two is a game that I think didn't get enough credit back in the day for how good it looks. It's Le Mans 24 Hour in the US released as Test Drive Le Mans. It looks stunning. Easily the best looking racer on the Dreamcast. Runs at a silky 60 frames per second. And actually, even by today's standard, I think that this looks absolutely great. I had an absolute blast playing this one. No, I haven't done the 24 hour full race, uh, but this one is really, really enjoyable, really, really deep, great racer, but also one that you can pick up and play. Highly recommend if you've never tried this one to pick up a monster. Before we reveal the number one, I want to reveal a few honourable mentions and just games that narrowly missed out on the list, still enjoyable, may have a place, but didn't quite make my top 15. And at number one, we have Metropolis Street Racer. Now this game was huge for me back in the day. It was a faithful recreation of London, Tokyo, San Francisco. It had weather, it had radio features in it. When we went under a bridge, the radio would go crackly. The visuals looked spectacular. You know, they don't hold up by today's standard, but what I was impressed with was just how fun this game still was just how good those real life recreations still look today. It was pioneering, it sadly did not sell, of course it was then spun off onto the Xbox as Project Gotham, but if you've never tried this on the Dreamcast, this should be in absolutely everyone's collection. MSR is by a long way the best race of it. Now one thing worth a mention, this list is my personal list, my personal views, so obviously if you disagree, love to hear what you think in the comments. If there's anything that you think I've missed, really, really interested, so, so feel free to leave a comment. 